The White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce and On Location TV19 are proud to present Your Business Matters, dedicated to your business needs. The White Bear Area Chamber is a nonprofit business organization serving as an advocate for the White Bear Area and its business community. Now here is the Executive Director of the White Bear Area Chamber and the host of Your Business Matters, Tom Snell. Welcome to Your Business Matters, brought to you by the White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce. Each month we interview community leaders, local business owners, so you can be informed about the developments in your community. I'm pleased to welcome today State Senator Roger Chamberlain of Senate District 38. He represents White Bear Township, North Oaks, and part of Blaine. Senator Chamberlain was recently named to a bipartisan legislative committee to address issues related to water use, which is a big topic in White Bear due to our declining lake level. Thanks, Roger Chamberlain, for joining us today on Your Business Matters. Thanks for asking and thanks for having me. Appreciate Always a pleasure. Thank you very uh, much for you coming you. out today. Absolutely, absolutely. We'll start uh, right away by getting into that, that committee that you're part of. Uh, it's a bipartisan committee, I understand, uh, looking at uh, local uh, and regional water issues. What can you tell me about it? Well, it, it's, it's a, it'll, we had the commission previously, but it, uh, it uh, was allowed to sunset and go away. So it was a good idea to bring it back, the right time to bring it back. I'm not a big committee and commission yeah. fellow, but um, when you think about water in the various departments in the state of Minnesota, and we've learned this uh, uh, intimately and firsthand in the last couple of years up here in White Bear Lake, that the state of Minnesota has a lot of different agencies and departments that deal with water. It's they do, it's not just one. Yeah, right, yeah, many. <laughs> it's very complicated, and it's hard for anybody to understand what's going on. So. The Water Commission allows the legislature to get some control over the issue again. So anything to do with water is going to come through this com this commission, this committee, bipartisan committee, and we will hear about it. We have rural members on there. We have urban members. We have suburban members. It's well balanced. Anything that has to do with water, we're going to be the clearinghouse, and we're going to know what's going on. Okay, and I don't want to get into a lot of uh, bureaucratic legalese here, but... I don't even know what that is. Yeah, well, uh, the... Department of Natural Resources, mm -hmm. from my understanding, uh, has uh, some control over the use of, of water as a natural resource and that they can do things without always getting legislative permission. Is that correct? There are things. I couldn't come up with uh, some things off the top of my head, but the groundwater management area that they've established. That's what I was talking right. about. The groundwater yep. management area that was uh, created by statute in 2010, but finally uh, put into action uh, last year by the DNR, gave the DNR broad authority. and Essentially, they could tell people to stop pumping water. They had no restrictions or constraints or controls on it. And um, that usually comes to the regulatory process. So in the last year, we were able to negotiate at least some, uh, some balance in that. We have a, 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 an advisory committee that the uh, DNR has to discuss the GF, GWMA with, the groundwater management area issues with, before they come up with a final plan. And all on through the process, they had to communicate with the, uh, this advisory group to the groundwater management area. Mm -hmm. They're members of the community, they're city officials, elected officials, unelected people who aren't elected who have large uh, water use in the, in the region where mm -hmm. this groundwater management area is. So it'll give some check and balance. They don't have veto power on it, but it gives them check and balance and gives citizen input and feedback to mm -hmm. the DNR mm -hmm. to make sure that we're not going too far. Now, uh, some of the reports that have been done about our area anyway point to the fact that perhaps the aquifer is being drawn down mm -hmm. because of use by residents and others in our communities. Uh, based on that, if that is true, uh, how might this new group that you're part of or agency or committee that you're part of actually deal with that type of a specific issue? Well, you know, just from my perspective, I believe the groundwater is being, our, our uh, supplies are being diminished. Mm -hmm. And that's nobody's fault. It's just we've been using more than has been going in. and But we can manage and fix it. So what would happen is um, uh, I think the group that we're on, the community that I'm on and some others are on now, will have 
ability to sort through this, uh, these complicated issues and uh, advise and suggest and recommend legislation or courses of action, regulatory action. So we can help advise and direct uh, legislation if need be and or regulatory action on the part of the agency. Mm -hmm. So we can uh, offer, again, a clearinghouse for all these uh, uh, ideas and law yeah. and all, anything to do with water. And uh, they'll all come through us and we can have one place where we're going to have the bank of knowledge and mm -hmm. we can suggest and recommend legislation, yeah. regulation, and and or temper the DNR and the agencies okay. and make sure we don't go too far. The the other one of the other issues that I want to bring up again on water is recently the Metropolitan Council, which is also an agency involved in this uh, issue, came up with a list of several recommendations, and one of them, uh, which would I think be a long term process would actually require the communities are, would encourage, maybe is a better term, the communities all the way from White Bear Lake up through Lionel Lakes to change over to what they call surface water mm -hmm. from groundwater. And the surface water would come all from the Mississippi River and right. get go through the city of St. Paul to mm -hmm. uh, these different areas. Now, there's a significant price tag, I understand, on that. And before we go to a point where we have to look at, at the, the cost for doing something like that, do you think there might be some intermediate steps like maybe conservation or other opportunities that can be taken by our local communities to help address this water issue? I, I, to, the short answer to your question is yes. There's a lot of things that I think, just like troubleshooting your computer or your yeah. car, uh, you start with the simplest stuff first. Is it plugged in? Uh, do you have, uh, did you, did you uh, reboot it uh, or your car? You start with the simplest pieces first and work up to the more complicated, mm -hmm. more expensive. And uh, that's how it should be done. We, uh, I think uh, my personal view is that somebody's going to have to go to surface water. Mm -hmm. And I think my, secondly, I think someone will have to go to surface water, but we as a state, then if we're going to require that and think it's a good public policy, we should probably incent these cities and towns to mm -hmm. do that. We shouldn't just say, you're going to do it, you're going to pay for it. We should somehow incent them and support them in that effort because our groundwater is being depleted. People will have to go to surface water. We mm -hmm. will have to manage. We will have to conserve. And there are a lot of things we can do before we get to that. So, yes, there are things we can do before we get there that aren't as expensive, that are easier. And I do also believe that we're going to have to, uh, as you uh, also know, some people will have, some cities will have to go to surface water and we should find a way to incent them. And just to clarify, the Met Council, you know, um, mm -hmm. I'm not the biggest fan, but there are things they do well and they can help. But, it, you know, there's, they didn't come up with the solutions. Uh, they helped come, they helped guide the conservation district, but the White Bear Lake Area Conservation mm -hmm. District came up with the three solutions to that, to the right. possible solutions to the thing. And then they Basically. came up with the pricing and the mechanisms. Yep. Yeah, right. they weren't the driving force right. of it. But it they are helping local. to facilitate and been a right. great resource. Yep. Right. Yep. 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 Now, what are uh, we mentioned conservation is one option. Do you think there are any other things that we can do before we uh, have to uh, go to the uh, go and and uh, incentivize some of our local communities to go to surface water? Well, I, I think, uh, first of all, you know, just we should thank the White Bear Area Chamber. Thank you. you know, yeah. Because the Chamber and others have been encouraging and bringing this, inf bringing this information uh, to the public, educating people about the issue and encouraging conservation. And I think White Bear Lake has done a good job. I think the numbers, I don't remember off the top of my head, have shown that they've reduced water use, they've uh, done things to conserve, They've started to reclaim some runoff. We need to do mm -hmm. better on that, though, and get some back in the lake and back into the um, into the uh, groundwater system. But I'm sorry, I forgot you. I was thanking you. I was thanking the chamber, and I forgot the main question. <laughs> well, the main question was, uh, what are some of the other options oh, okay. that might be right. open uh, that uh, are are short of uh, incentivizing communities to go to uh, surface? Well, water? I, I'll I'll say two <clears throat> things. One is, you know, there's runoff, and a lot of Cities and towns are doing that. Hugo has a good idea about reclaiming runoff with their gray golf course right. with gray water yeah. uh, to irrigate the large irrigation only accounts. Many many municipalities can do that. Counties can help out. 
for uh, other uh, conservation itself. We have runoff that we can put into ponds and let it soak back into the lakes. Mm -hmm. um, and working with businesses, and we had to educate the public because some folks think there's no problem, and other people think the sky's falling. But we had to get into the middle there somewhere. My personal uh, thought is, you know, something that all communities would have be vested in, and they could reclaim the recover the costs on it, is a regional wastewater system that's longer term. Mm -hmm. But we've done it out in Sartell, and there are people with ideas, and they can get it on the drawing board. The council mm -hmm, still mm -hmm. has it in the back burner. A regional wastewater system would keep all that water into a closed loop, most of it. And what we use up here out of the ground, instead of pumping from the surface, if you think about using, spending four or $500 million on running pipes and getting everybody on surface water, why don't we spend $50 million or $100 million, all the communities get involved, they have a return on their investment, when they build a, a nice yeah. facility to reclaim the water and put it back into our ground. And so then, you keep it yeah. here. Yeah, would, that would seem to make a lot of logical sense to do something like that. Well, Met Council has in the back burner. A couple people approached me about it. You've mentioned it. Uh, but I think, I think it's not one of the three solutions. I'm fairly, I'm, I'm fairly frustrated that it isn't. Mm -hmm. But it's still there, and people are talking about it, and I think it must be out there because... We're a growing metro area. We can't keep sending mm -hmm. water down the pig's eye. If we were to spend that $100 million or whatever it would take to run the pipes to a permanent long-term solution that would take the water that we use out of the ground, recondition it, clean it, put it back where it came from, I think we go a long way. And yeah, then, I think we go a long way toward solving we, the lake issue, too. And then we pay for it with sewer yeah. access fees, whatever it is, and we get the Met Council kind of out of that loop because their access charges yeah, are yeah. Uh, horrendous if not mafia like okay. the other another issue that i want to deal with is transportation and <clears throat> i recently heard that uh, the state if we run transportation the way we do now that there's going to be a significant deficit because uh, we use gas tax money and people are buying more efficient cars and so we're not collecting as much gas tax money as mm -hmm. we used to. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you've got any thoughts about transportation, uh, what needs to be done in our community, mm -hmm. and maybe how we should move forward with that. Well, I think, you know, if we talk about, you know, this is a, this is a big issue, but quickly, yep. I think as far as what we need in our community, others have mentioned this as well, is we need bus service. They won't bring buses yeah. up here. We That's need, right. We, why can't we have a bus service that comes from here? I got bus service in Lionel Lakes. Why can't we have bus service in the northeast over here through uh, Vandis and White Bear Lake and Hugo? And uh, well, not necessarily. They're kind of up there a ways. But why can't we have bus service over here instead of planning another multi, another you know, multi-billion dollar train? Let's have a bus. They're mo mobile. They're easy to use, and you can put them out right away. So. I mean, as far as that goes, we need some bus service. There's a there's a, a plan. I was wondering if you've got any thoughts on it. One of the one of the plans that people are talking about is having what they call rapid bus transit that would go from Hugo through White Bear, uh, I think, into um, Vadnais Heights and then into St. Paul. Is that the kind of thing that you I, would, I would envision? I would, I would support. I would rather have a discussion about that and support that before we talk about running another train up. Up the uh, up the line here. The rush okay. was it the rush line? Um, I just people don't want the trains. We did some polling. And we got some numbers. People don't want any more trains. They're expensive. They're a hundred million dollars a mile. You can get ten miles a road two ways with that, and it just doesn't make sense to keep doing that. We can do it better, smarter, wiser with uh, better allocation of resources, giving people bus service to where the people live and work. Trains don't go where most people live and work. Yeah, I, buses I will. think it takes about a day to get to St. Paul by bus from, <laughs> from White Bear. Uh, You'd have to one go. Of the, one of the legislators <laughs> took a bus to St. Paul to find out how long it would take, and I think it was like four hours. Well, so. you'd have to go over to probably uh, over to Lionel Lakes and hop a couple things and go down. You get a 262 over there, and it runs from that uh, parking yeah, so ride. So it's not an easy thing <laughs> to do. It, so I think, uh, I think something like you had mentioned is viable. I'd rather have a conversation about that that makes sense, that is something that people can use. It's easily moved, it's adjusted, and managed a lot uh, more effectively and can respond to citizens in the community mm -hmm. a lot better. But we simply have to get off the kick of, of the trains everywhere. Now, we, uh, we had some proposals that would have added $300 million 
annually to, tr to roads. And that did not include any tax increases. Really? It was a proposal for uh -huh. sales tax exemption, sales tax ex exemptions for the DOT, Department of Transpa Transportation, mm -hmm. sales tax exemption for them. And then uh, on top of that, creating efficiencies, efficiencies within the system. Right, right. And they believe, they have made that proposal a couple of years ago. They believe they could do it. And that was part of that uh, tax increase deal in 06 and 07, is that DOT would come up with efficiencies to save money. They haven't come up with their efficiencies. So they believe they can come up with $200 million, $150 million, and then the, the sales tax exemption for DOT mm -hmm. purchasing equipment would save a ton more money. And I'm going to uh, get into uh, controversial territory here, but changing the, the, the calculation for our, our wage structure when yeah, we yeah, uh, calculate yeah. that. Instead of using Minnesota's uh, mode, use the median. You know, mm -hmm. use a different process. We can save a lot of money and get that back in the roads. We do not need to increase taxes again. They have not held up their end of the bargain. We should look at these other ways for efficiencies and saving money through common sense things mm -hmm. and um, taking that money and putting it back into mm -hmm. roads. And that's a significant influx of cash and revenue into the yep, roads. Yep. And we can put roads and bridges out there, and that's what people need, and that's what they can have. We're not, we are not going to grow to... Uh, 20 million people in the metropolitan area or this state. We're, if you've seen the birth rates lately, we're not having babies. You and I are getting older, and that's what's coming along. What's coming along are fewer babies, and that's bad news for the people like you and me who will retire. So people aren't having kids. We're not. Unless we have 30 million immigrants coming here, we are not going to grow to those numbers. It is, it is yep. an insane thing to think. We don't have a baby boomer thing going yeah. on. So what That's do you think, uh, what are some other issues getting to our local area mm -hmm. that you think are important uh, to look at uh, from both the legislature and from your own perspective? Well, you know, there's always, there's always uh, the, the, you know, just this area over here, you know, the district varies quite a bit from rural to and high income to low income. But um, rural to, I should say, almost urban, high income, low income, and uh, completely uh, developed cities to cities that aren't. So um, issues, I mean, of course, water, uh, of course, transportation, bus service up here. I think issues that are important to everybody across the state, not just the region, region are, you know, creating opportunities for success for everybody. Yep. You know, opportunities for success for people to run their own lives, to build something for themselves and their families, give value to their lives. Opportunities like that. And we have to get off this idea that uh, we are getting people stuck in, in a system that is going to crush and swallow us. We have a great nation, a great state, a great community, and if, you, if we, we're at our best with an empowered citizenry, that's when they can get up, go to work, do what they want to do, innovate, create. Create, follow their own destiny, pursue their own happiness, and you like this, you know, mm -hmm. their own dreams. They can create their own happiness, pursue their dreams, but we have to empower them. We have to allow them to create value in their lives. Mm -hmm. And what uh, I will say this, what we did in the last, what happened in the last two years in legislation, what could have happened in the last two years that did not happen uh, was the opposite direction. It just has, as you know firsthand, it, uh, people are very concerned. I talked to a gentleman at the church the other day. He's a nice guy. He said, we had to leave. You know, I talked to someone the other day. We had to get out of here. People don't want to be here that are productive, hardworking people. We have scorned and punished success and hard work. And well, we had to yeah. allow people that opportunity to grow and create opportunities yeah, for success. We've got such a vigorous winter, I think, that everybody <laughs> wants to stay. But, we uh, need better, better plows, better know. plows, more plowing. But anyway, the, uh, what I wanted to know uh, mm -hmm. finally here is if somebody wants to get a hold of you, mm -hmm. how do they contact you? I, uh, the, get a, the easiest way to get a hold of me is okay. through the Capitol Office. You can find us online, Minnesota. If you type in Minnesota Senate, takes you to the Minnesota Senate mm -hmm. and just go there and right up there it just tells you who's who who uh, your legislators you don't have yep. to know where you're at just your legislator if you're looking for me you can do it alphabetically by district whatever so it's easy to find Minnesota Senate I don't even remember my the name oh I think the number to my office 651-296-1515 something three one two five three one two five three go you got it okay so Great. I got it right so they can get hold of me that way well, thank Easy you. To find. Thank you so much for joining us today. And your business matters. <laughs> and we had with us uh, Senator Roger Chamberlain 
uh, from Senate District 38 Eight. and represents the White Bear Township and our community. And uh, thank you, Senator Chamberlain, for being my guest. And until next time, thank you for watching Your Business Matter. You've been watching Your Business Matters. For more information on this program or the White Bear Area Chamber, visit www.whitebearchamber.com or call 651-429-8593. Thank you.